Uh, so yeah, like I said, I am Blaine Caston. I'm from Lincoln. Um, I do the Nebraska DS there. I invite you guys all to come to Nebraska DS in Lincoln every month if you guys want to make a drive. Um, we do it monthly. We uh, have cool people from Lincoln talk. So uh, do you guys, anyone know what server sorter is? Hey, we got a guy and a half. Alright, uh, so service worker is basically going to make everyone's life even more hell as a developer, making things more difficult. Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump into it. Uh, first off, do, do you guys know like how the web gets new features uh, through like W3 specs and things like that? Um, so essentially this is a new W3 spec, meaning that it's going to be across all browsers someday, and things will work really well. Um, let's get into what it is. So basically, nowadays we've got these two cool dudes uh, that we both are, we're both those guys probably at some point. We both do like front end development for the browser, some of us do back end development also. Um, now we get this little weirdo in between them. Uh, so the front, basically the idea is when the, every browser makes a request and hits a server somewhere through the network, the server kicks back some stuff. So now service worker lets you be that middle guy. You can do things before it gets to the server, and you can do things to the network player before it gets back to the browser. Pretty messed up. Um, so basically, this is service worker. Uh, what it lets you do is intercept the network player. I, I presented this in the front in Lincoln a few months ago, so I can't figure out how things go. Uh, yeah, so basically, with this, it's kind of like super confusing. We got a whole new world of possibilities. Uh, a big thing is that we have offline websites with this. Um, your websites, you can cache everything locally and the browser can serve those things before it hits the network. Um, a, a feature of it eventually is going to be push notifications. So like on your mobile devices, you know how like native apps, uh, they can like send you push notifications to your menu bar. The idea is websites can do that even if you don't have them loaded up. Um, the service worker is already installed on the machine. So if something, if you code something that's going to push a notification, they can get it on their thing, open it, and it brings it right back up to the website or something like that. Um, other things like geofencing, if you guys know what that is, it's like you could figure out where a person is in the world. So if you're a target, you could figure out if your guy's inside your store and do things to them through the phone. Uh, so essentially what it all leads to is getting websites or web apps to feel like natives. Uh, native apps. Um, as you all know, like a native app still runs when you're not on the internet, but it's kind of worthless. Mm -hmm. So now we can have worthless and working websites when you're not on the internet. <laughs> um, so kind of how things work, or sorry, some concepts that come into play here is a bunch of new stuff. Um, so there's a new fetch API, which is like a supersede to the uh, XHR requests that traditionally are in browsers nowadays with uh, XML requests or whatever it's called. Uh, there's a new cache API for caching um, assets um, or anything. Uh, there's a new, uh, so if any of you guys use web workers, they kind of live in a different context than the window parent that your browser runs into. So you got to be aware of that also. Um, there's new APIs for making requests and handling responses through JavaScript. There's streams, which is a weird new spec that's also in play here. It's a bunch of new concepts, it's a whole new world, it's a pain in the butt to learn, but you can do crazy things. Uh, so essentially how it works, um, when you first visit a website, if service worker, there's a, there's a service worker dot register function that can be called, if they call it, what the browser does is it checks to see if the service worker has already been installed. If it hasn't, it will start installing, which is a event that you can bind to and do whatever you want in the install function. Think of it like, a, like an app. When it runs the install function, it's installing things onto your machine. That's literally what it's doing. You install things onto the client machine. Um, after the install ran, and if it went successful, it's going to do an activated event, which is another event that you can bind into, do things with. If it doesn't go well, it just errors out, and there's no service worker. Um, and then it just works as a normal website at that point. Uh, once it's activated, it kind of sits in this idle thing, and on every page request after that, um, you can handle the, handle the responses. So the first time you visit a website is essentially like the install app on an iPhone or from the App Store. After it's installed, you can start using it. So same way, you first visit a website, you have to have an internet connection still to first visit it. 
after you visit it once and it did all the proper service worker stuff, the website is considered uh, locally installed and can run um, in that way. So at that point, once it's like in this idle state, every single new request into the two arrows or like the fetch message or terminated things go back. Um, so it's kind of, so yeah, there's the three different events in service worker, the install, the activate, the fetch. And we'll kind of go through those and what it looks like. Um, so essentially this is, actually let's do a demo first. Uh, let's just do a demo. Okay, so I tried to throw it into NebraskaJS.com, uh, but we don't have SSL on NebraskaJS, and I have that SSL. So I copied uh, NebraskaJS into a GitHub repo. That's on SSL. Um, so if I So at this point, I don't have any service worker installed. Um, I have an internet connection. If I visit this website, you can see down here below all the errors about other things, uh, you get this EA service worker registration, which is just me like console logging things. So this says that service worker did work, it installed. Um, there's this like Chrome internal thing that shows you different service workers installed. Um, you can stop and stuff. So at this point, if I didn't have internet, so let me turn off my Wi-Fi and to prove that I'm off the internet. I go to Google.com, I got nothing. But now, if I just reload, I'm still on our website. I can use this. Uh, so that can do a lot of cool things for static websites or like web apps that are cooler. Uh, so not only do you just get like that offline world, um, it also can make your websites load a lot faster. So another like quick note, since at this point it's serving directly from the cache in the local machine, um, say I just go down to like a ridiculously slow internet, which is what this thing's doing, it's throttling my network. If I reload, it still happens pretty dang fast. Like everything rendered out really good. Um, the rest of JS that doesn't quite have service worker out. If I do the same test, my internet, yeah. Yeah, see. Waiting for an image. Still waiting for an image. Still waiting for an image. Go on for a while. It's a really slow network. Now we're changing the fonts. So the fonts. Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it'll be good. Service work will help this. Uh, it'll make it go faster. Um, yeah. So there's a demo of just a simple like offline use case for an app. Um, essentially how this works is you have this service worker file that binds into this event called install. Um, the install event passes the event parameter, um, and the event parameter has this wait until function that receives a promise. Um, everything in service worker has to do with promises, which is awesome, but kind of a headache because you want to later. Um, I guess we're talking about service or promises today. So yeah, so you have to pass a promise into that. That way, when the promise resolves, the install function knows it finished and it can say it installed correctly. So um, what we're doing here is we're waiting until this, we open a cache for this cache version name. When the cache is opened, then we are adding these routes. Um, and when we do this cache at, at all, it's basically making actual HTTP requests to those items and caching the responses into a local browser cache. Uh, yeah, browser cache. Um, pretty simple. After this point, after they get all added, it bubbles back up, says that we're all done, and the install event finishes. Um, directly after that, we get the activate method. Um, so the activate method gets called every single time the page refreshes. Yes, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's called every single time the service worker register method is called. Um, essentially what the activate method is used for is like versioning out your app. Um, so since you're uh, caching assets, if they ever changed, you would still be serving the old assets even because they're already cached. So you have to kind of like version them out. Uh, what I'm doing here is, um, in this last one I created a cache called cache version name. I don't know that I want to do that. But essentially, uh, we look, we grab all the keys that are in the cache, so that would only return cache version name. Um, 
and then we create a from list that checks to see if, say let's say a cache version name, because that's what I should say. Um, it checks to see if the same cache is still looking, or still exists, and if any others aren't there. If any other cache is in there that is not your current cache, delete them. So that's how you kind of version out. Like say you go from like cache version one, uh, on all those requests, it would always load up cache version one. As soon as you change over to cache version two, it can delete cache version one and install cache version two. It's kind of a roundabout way to think about it. Um, so that's the activate method, it's kind of migrating versions. Uh, your fetch method is essentially what gets called then on every network uh, request from your browser. Um, so that's reloads, that's uh, Ajax requests, um, all of them. They all get passed through this and you can either just let it go through or do something with it. Um, with this one, we're essentially taking the event that request right here is the actual request. Um, so we're checking to see if it's in the map, in the cache, which is this cache that match. If it is, then we look for this response um, and return the response. Uh, this is kind of a weird thing where if we don't actually have the response, like get cached wrong, then we call it the fetch method, which is essentially an ATAX method to make the request um, and then return that. So it's a really simple way to look at that. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. And then we have the demo that we already did. So there's a few <coughs> sound bad things about it. Um, it only works on HTTPS or SSL. And the reason why is we're giving people control over the network layer. We don't really want somebody to be able to jump into that and do something. So if it's SSL encrypted, the idea is that no one can do that. So it's all about safety. So if you don't have SSL, get an SSL and then use service worker. Um, and it's not actually a bad thing because everyone should use SSL. It's safer. Uh, another bad thing is there's a, there's a polyfill you have to use for a cache. Like the cache isn't fully implemented everywhere. Um, but that's just the nature of it being a young product. Um, it has a pretty horrible debugging experience. So the first time that I did this talk, uh, Chrome 40 wasn't quite out yet, and so I just attributed it to being like a canary issue. Uh, Chrome 40 is now out, so service work is technically a live thing. Um, and it still sucks. Uh, <laughs> I, I tried doing it on Canary now, which is version 42, and it's still terrible. It's still really hard to figure out what goes wrong, if things go wrong. Um, doesn't help very much. But it's getting better. I, I will say it's gotten a lot better. Um, so with that, all new things have some bugs. Bugs being like not giving you good feedback on what goes wrong. Uh, there's promise hell, which we'll, this we'll talk about later. Um, basically, just like promise after promise after promise. And if you don't understand how they all resolve back up to the root, it can get confusing. Um, and it's just a whole new world. If you haven't done web work or uh, you have web workers before, it's you're in a whole new context, which is confusing. Not having the window object there. Um, there's a lot of new te like technologies and ideas, so it's just kind of hard to get into. Um, current support. Uh, there's a sweet website that Jake Archibald made um, called Is Service Worker Ready, and essentially it just is a live updating thing of where service workers at. So right now we got these three guys who are actually enthusiastic about it. Um, Safari is not saying anything, as always, and Internet Explorer is currently considering it. Uh, so it's going to have pretty good bug support coming up soon, but it'll obviously get better over the years. There's a bunch of pieces that go into making service work all the way part of it, which is these list of things. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So you can go on here and see where everyone's at. Currently, Chrome 40 has the best support for it. Minus a certain, like a few cache functions, uh, but it's it's getting close and it's pretty usable nowadays. So it doesn't hurt to uh, put it on your website; it can only help. Um, I think, yeah. So uh, I should probably first show you guys how to register it. Um, let's make this bigger. Can you guys see that? No. No? Yeah, okay. Sorry for the vim weirdness. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, uh, just a really quick demo. Um, <coughs> essentially, this is really weird working with it this big. Um, service worker. No, I put it in box.
There you go. So this is how you do service worker. Uh, so real escapes that is just the service worker is available on the navigator object. All you have to do is check if it's there. If it's not there, you don't have to do anything. If nothing bad will ever happen, if it is there, it'll do this stuff, which is cool. Um, so all you do is call navigator.serviceworker.register. You give it the path to the service worker JavaScript file. Um, so on, on this website, it was service worker demo slash swjs. Um, and then at that point, you can give it an optional scope. Uh, the scope is what domains the service worker has access to control. Um, so if I only want to get a control over like test, test, <laughs> no bad idea. Um, then the service worker can only modify paths that were within that scope. scope. Um, otherwise, you can give it other places. Um, the service worker can only ever access things from where it's at. So if like I have the service worker actually located in like a slash JS file like route, it can only access things after the JS part of it. Um, part of its safety mechanisms, I guess. Um, so at that point, it actually does all the calls. So I'll show you my service worker file really quick. Um, this is a service worker file, it's just a simple JavaScript file. Uh, this import scripts brings in the cache polyfill thing that you don't need. Um, here's me just trying to create versionable cache names. So my cache name is essentially NEJS underscore three. Um, here's different URLs that I want to cache off the bat. Um, and then all I do is, this looks a lot like the uh, demo. Um, I just add all those URLs to the cache. Um, and assuming everything went well, it'll install just fine. I just do the exact same thing about the cache name. I check to see if, uh, I, I get the cache keys, check to see if they are uh, the ones that I waitlisted, and if they're not, I delete the ones that aren't. Um, and then a simple fetch response here. This one I actually got kind of crazy with. Um, <coughs> basically, if like when I do a fetch, if I have the response already cached, uh, I return that. Otherwise, I'll go and fetch it and then cache it. So that way, any subsequent thing that I do is already in the cache, um, and I don't have to manually manage everything that gets cached. Uh, has anybody had questions about this so far? It's kind of a lot of stuff. Almost done. <laughs> I'll, I'll get away soon. Uh, <laughs> So real quick, just things to think about when you're debugging. Um, Chrome has these internal URLs. Uh, this one inspect service worker. Uh, it shows you different URLs that have a service worker installed in your machine. Um, you can unregister them, you can start them, you can do different things like that. There's also this nice button that's like open the dev tools when the service worker starts for debugging. So if I do that, like when I reload, it's gonna open up this guy and I can step through my service worker and actually make sure everything goes well all those deals. Just hence all these requests that are just made and logged. Uh, yeah, and then there's a, uh, another one that's like Chrome Inspect Service Workers, which is a very similar thing, but like, I think it's the one that the public's supposed to know about. I think this one's like kind of a secret. Uh, and this one just lets you inspect the stuff before terminating. Um, so, with that, there's a bunch of cool sources out there. Um, people like Matt Gaunt have wrote about it, and uh, Alex Russell, which are like the main dudes who are doing stuff with it. Um, there's the specs always, like, go check it out. There's a bunch of stuff being added to the API, um, and it's going to be really cool. Uh, yeah, that's all I got, unless people have questions. Yeah? yeah the example you gave was uh, serving content for a static website and caching it. Yeah. Is there a use case for sites that serve dynamic content? Totally. Uh, do you guys know the Financial Times? Okay. Uh, so the Financial Times have this really, really cool web app. Um, it's like one that you would install into your machine on a phone. Um, it has a bunch of things like this. So it's a, it's a news feed. Um, so news feeds like dynamic news that comes in. What they do is they cache like the current news feeds so that way like you could always, if you didn't have an internet connection, you could still look at the previous news feeds. Um, and then when you get an internet connection again, it'll like fetch and get the new ones. So that's the use case. Um, if you you could even do you could, so this is why I can turn it into hells because you could do crazy things if you want to. Um, so like say you had some dude fill out a form, um, but they weren't on the internet. You could like cache the form into service worker, and when the when the connection returns, actually send it off at that point. Um, so there's definitely 
ways to get around it. So does it always have to do with caching something? Is that the sole purpose of the service worker? No. Um, it, that's just like currently what it can do. Okay. Uh, the purpose of it is to intercept the network layer and do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, so if you can imagine what you can do with a request before it gets to a server or after it gets back from the server, you can do weird things to it. Yeah. yeah. So on the offline side, uh, I know there was another entire API for building online apps, uh, AppCache. Is there, there. What's the reason for why they build service workers? Because uh, AppCache is terrible. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. App, so if you use AppCache, it's essentially just like do these 10 things and it will hopefully work. Um, service Worker gives you like a bunch of primitives so you can do what you want with it. Like you, you could do Service Worker and not do a cache at all. You can do the other things that we talked about. Um, or you can build a cache for just these certain things. Or um, some of the time work after the JS, since it's like primarily service videos, uh, a website that like still renders but doesn't show you the videos is kind of dumb, especially when. Um, yeah, so there's supposed to be a video right here, but I was trying to intercept the request to YouTube and just return like a static page that says like you're offline or something like that. Um, you could do that with that cache. You can't like tell it to return something else when you request this certain thing. So that's kind of the goal was to give developers the control rather than the browser the control. Anything else, guys? Cool. Uh, check it out. It's really fun. I'm a headache. <laughs> <laughs>